Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer from English with Jennifer. In my grammar lesson on the uses of wood, I shared my top 10 list of romantic comedies. Jerry Maguire made that list, and one quote from the movie that sticks in my mind is, I've failed as much as I've succeeded. To be honest, I've failed as much as I've succeeded. I love that quote from Jerry's mentor. It's about recognizing that life is full of mistakes and failures. A few of our ideas may take off, but many will never go anywhere. We have to be thankful when we take risks and things work out. Successes for many of us are fewer than our failures, and that's okay. I personally think it's okay to have moments of weakness. It's okay to sit down and cry. The important thing is not to give up. We may experience failure. We may face criticism, but we find the strength to stand up, move forward, and continue reaching for our goals. One of your goals right now is to master three of the most common phrasal verbs in English. Take off can be a transitive or intransitive phrasal verb. How did I just use it? I said a few of our ideas may take off, but many will never go anywhere. You can guess that ideas that don't go anywhere are not successful. That means when ideas take off, they are successful. I'm using it as an intransitive phrasal verb, no object. An idea can take off. Someone's career can take off. A new business can suddenly take off. Like many phrasal verbs, this one has multiple meanings. Here's another use you probably already know. What does a plane do? How does it get in the air? It takes off. We use this phrasal verb with an aircraft, a helicopter, a plane. Taking off means leaving the ground. This use is also intransitive. Your plane can take off on time. Your plane can take off from a certain city. It takes off from the runway. With this phrasal verb, we can even form a compound noun. Take off. What is something passengers are required to do during takeoff and landing? Can you give me examples? Put them in the comments. The most common meaning of take off is remove. At night, I take off my jewelry. When you come home, do you take off your shoes? How about in someone else's home? You can tell me in the comments. With this use, take off is transitive and separable. Take off what? Take something off. Take your hat off. Here are two more uses. Can you match the meanings? Our dog takes off after delivery trucks. She jumps off the porch and runs to the end of our property. She moves suddenly as if to catch the truck or maybe just to chase it away. A person can take off and go on a trip. It's about leaving and moving quickly. This use is intransitive, no object. As for taking a day off, that means you spend time away from your job or your usual activity. This use is transitive and separable. How much time do you think people should take off from work in order to have a healthy work-life balance? Tell me in the comments. Workout is intransitive. When things work out, they prove to be successful. Things can work out well. Things can work out better than expected. Things can work out in your favor. I don't think things are going to work out between us. 
The true test of character, I think, is how a person reacts when things don't work out. What do you do? Complain? Cry? Laugh? Seek support? Form a new plan? Maybe all of the above. <laughs> With this use, work out is intransitive, no object. Here are two more uses. Can you match the meanings? When you work something out, like you work out the details, you're finding a solution, you're forming a plan. Work out with this meaning is transitive and separable. Work out a plan, work it out. Working out can also be about exercising. It's what someone does regularly for their health. With this meaning, work out is intransitive, no object. Some people work out at home, others work out at the gym. Do you work out at all? Tell me in the comments. What's the compound noun formed from this phrasal verb? Workout. A morning workout. A workout routine. Workout clothes. Stand up is intransitive, no object. It simply means to rise to your feet. We can stand up tall, we can stand up straight. When I was in elementary school, we were taught to stand up and greet the principal when she entered the classroom. Did you ever have to stand up as a sign of respect? I'm a bit old-fashioned, and I still think it's nice when a gentleman stands up as a lady leaves the table. Where are you going? I'm going to the ladies. Stand up is sometimes combined with another action. What do you do on your feet? Well, it may be something you do in public. Stand up and clap. Stand up and make a toast. Did you ever have to stand up and give a speech? You can tell me that in the comments. Stand up can also have a figurative use. Can you guess the meaning? The smaller boy stood up to the big bully and told him to stop. The actress stood up to her critics and defended her work. Is this about being weak or strong? In this sense, standing up to someone is about not letting them treat you badly. It's about showing strength and defending yourself. Similarly, you can stand up for something or for someone else. You can stand up against something you don't like. It's about defending what you believe in and showing what you support. Stand up for yourself. Yep. Finally, something can stand up over time and prove to be true. Hard evidence can stand up in court and help a judge decide a case. A good theory can stand up, and stand up well. It's certainly tricky when phrasal verbs have more than one meaning. You need to gain confidence making guesses. Let's practice. Here's an informal use of stand up. Watch and try to guess the meaning. My date stood me up. Now guess, is this good or bad? The guy walks in, he's alone, he joins his male friends and says, my date stood me up. Good or bad? Bad. His date didn't come. She never showed up. Ouch. Have you ever been stood up? Quiz time. What are the possible meanings of take off? What kinds of things can you work out?
what kinds of things do people stand up for? All three phrasal verbs have a meaning related to success, but you need to associate them with different contexts and certain phrases. So choose the best answers. Once again, here are all the questions you can use for practice. Tell me your answers in the comments. We'll end here. Please like and share the video if you found the lesson useful and interesting. Remember to review other phrasal verbs from earlier lessons. As always, thanks for watching and happy studies! Hey everyone, did you know that you can join and become my YouTube member? It's only $1 a month. You get practice tasks two times a week as well as an exclusive playlist of recorded live streams and all my audio gifts on Emojam. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Why not join me on Patreon? And don't forget to subscribe on YouTube.